Swinging a high drive in the center field. Hits at the wall. It is gone. Passes does it again. Again. It's gone. It's in the bullpen. This game is tied. This game is tied. He swings and rips one to center field. It's high. It's deep. It's back. It's gone. Sale winds. He fires. Swing and a miss. Right play. It's over. The Red Sox. Whoa! Welcome back to Play Tessie. It's episode 75. If you're listening on Drop Dates, May 23rd, episode 75. We're really getting into the thick of it here. It's Yaxel Rios is getting the shout out here. I could have given it to Brandon Walter, but I thought Yaxel Rios would be funnier. I know uh, Brandon Walter is a friend of the friend of the program, Chris Murphy. But, oh, yeah? But Yaxel Rios, it doesn't get much funnier than Yaxel. Duh. Oh man, I was so convinced that he was gonna be like a good sixth or seventh inning guy. His stuff was good. Do you remember his glove? Okay, I remember there was something with his glove, but I don't remember so the, specifically. So his glove, Yaxel Rios's glove. Maybe if you Google, it'll pop up. But the web was just a plain piece of leather, no woven anything, no T, nothing. It was just a plain flat piece of leather and i'd never seen that before and i've never seen it since that screams we have to look up koji wihara's glove that's no, see, it, koji whatever had, reason, what was his koji, koji had his own silhouette woven into his glove he had the coolest glove ever remember it was him mid pitch or it, maybe it wasn't him it was a pitcher throwing a pitch and that was woven into the web of his glove yaxel had nothing just a plain flap i'm gonna try to find it while yeah while find, you find a picture This is the official podcast of Spelling History with a couple of ones, also known as the official Red Sox podcast of WEI. Before we get going here, just remember, hit that subscribe button. Whether you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or the Odyssey app, hit the subscribe button, rate us five stars, leave a comment, tell us what you think of the Red Sox recent four-game winning streak that they're on. Check us out on YouTube. We are on the WEI channel. We've got a playlist there. So check us out there. Hit the thumbs up on the video, but let's get going here. I'm here with Sammy. I'm here with Pat. It's Gordo here. Before we get going, forgot. Socials, at Playtessie, both Twitter and Instagram. But guys, the Sox went into Tampa and swept the race. We haven't said that in over five years. No, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. No they, way. They, I don't no, believe. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I'm not tripping. It, it feels happened. Fake. It feels insane to say that like that. When, when did they say the last time they won? The last 19? time they won a series was like 2019 and now they swept them. Yeah, it's it's almost surreal. I I, I don't I don't know the right words to describe it because it's not like it's it's not like it feels like they won the like a, the World Series or anything, but it feels like raw, like it feels almost impossible. Does that make yeah. sense? It's not like it feels like it feels great. It doesn't feel special but it feels almost wrong. It would be like the Jets sweeping the season series with the Patriots. It would be very strange. Right. It feels like like you... Even in their worst season ever, the Pats couldn't lose both to the Jets. It's like you did something very, very wrong or very taboo, and you completely got away with it, and you can't can't kind of... You can't come to terms with it. Like, how did that just happen? I got away with it? The Red Sox went to Tampa and... The record got better, not worse. It's just a weird, a weird feeling, but a good feeling. Yeah, and and uh, for you non-standings watchers, Sammy, I know you don't keep an eye on the standings. No, nope. but I did. I did, and I was watching today. If the Twins had lost their game today, the Red Sox would be in a playoff spot right now. Yep, in sole possession. Can you believe that? Yes, it's May. I'll I'll say one thing before we before we get going on stuff. I got a question for you guys, but I'll say one thing first, just because like. We've been through this song and dance. This is now the third straight year of this song and dance where the Red Sox, I'm not even going to say that they hover around 500. I guess they do, but it, it's not in the way you'd expect. When you when you say a team hovers around 500, you think, all right, they win two out of three, they lose two out of three. They win two out of three a couple times and they lose two out of three. a couple. That's not the way it's worked with the Red Sox for three straight years now. We have been through this song and dance. And this is why when, when Bradfoe asks me on the radio, my confidence level in the team, I think I gave him a four. And at the time they were on a 
down spiral. Like they were in one of their ruts. I think they lost like seven of nine or something like that. And I said four, and that wasn't lower because I said, I know that they're going to come back around and make us buy in again when they win four in a row like they have right now. This is just what we've got with the Red Sox for the last three years. I don't know how to explain it, but they lost a bunch of games. Now they have won four in a row. They'll have an off day, and then the Brewers are going to come to town, and they're good, but we'll get into it in the preview. They don't have the best pitchers going. They don't really have the best rotation anyway. Dude, but- I'm just I'm so happy they have an off day tomorrow. We get to sit on this for an entire 24 hours. Not that I don't want to watch the Red Sox play. Of course, I love watching them play, but we just get to like soak in the sweep, think about Milwaukee a little bit, but mostly just <laughs> the Red Sox did it. They swept the race. This is our World Series. <laughs> it's uh, no, well, it's actually, not. I was about over. to say it's. Season's I was about to say it's rare. It, Pop the bottles. Stop the count. <laughs> Stop the count. <laughs> we did it. You know what's crazy? The last time the Red Sox lost was when the Bruins got bounced, and that feels like a while ago now. Wait, say that again. The last time the Red Sox lost was when the Bruins. Yeah, okay, that adds up. That makes sense. Because the Sox won their last game against the Cardinals on Sunday, and then they swept the Rays. And tomorrow they won't lose. Nope. So Thursday they will not lose. Friday is their next opportunity to lose. I kind of like it. I mean, technically Bruins got eliminated on Friday. They lost the game Saturday. So Mm. technicality for Oh, I was wrong. You're right. I thought the Bruins was Saturday. God damn it. Okay. My narrative's done. Yeah. My narrative's a shot. Gordo had it wrong. Cool. Uh, question for you guys, because this mm-hmm. is the, I don't know if maybe it's happened before. I don't, I, I don't really remember. 650 start times, all three games. Thoughts on that? It's so, it's, it's so stupid. It's just so, so major league baseball. Like, I like it. It's great. It started a little bit early, but to just randomly do it in the middle of the season, no rhyme or reason, probably. People were probably caught off guard. I bet there were a lot of people who missed like the first inning, two innings. It's just classic Major League Baseball. It makes no sense at all. They didn't explain it. If they did, I'd be like, all right. Like Atlanta. Atlanta, when they play the Braves, they start at 720. Atlanta has the worst traffic in the United States. Okay, I get it. You start 10 minutes late. Makes sense. 650, Tampa. I like it, but it's stupid. Why'd you do it? I didn't know that about the Braves thing. I didn't know that. I knew they always did the 720 starts. I didn't know why. So you're the first. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually. Pat, I'm, I'm going to be in Atlanta next month, I believe. So let me. Uh, I'll give this traffic. I can't imagine traffic being worse than LA. So we'll see. I'll give you a, a traffic report. Yeah, I'm curious. Pat, six fifty, yay or nay? I like the six fifty starts because by the time the game's over, I'm not completely dead by the end of the. I mean, it's twenty minutes, fifteen minutes, but it makes a difference in the end. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's because I sit down and like watch the game earlier. So when it ends a little bit earlier, I feel like, oh, it's already over. That's a little weird. I love the 650 start time. I, I would like it if it were a regular thing. I just don't yeah, like being okay. caught that's off guard. That's what I meant. Like I if think they that's went- my issue is like, if- I don't like being caught off guard. Like the Roku game, sick broadcast. The picture was much better, but I hate it because I had to go friggin' download this Roku app. Well, look, actually, I have a Roku TV, so it was already there. I didn't know it exist. I didn't know the Roku app was a thing. I'm like, oh, crap, I I guess I have this. But yeah, it's it's the lack of consistency, which I think when you play 162 games in a sport like baseball, consistency would behoove the league. But what do I know? I'm an idiot. See, I'll, I'm going to take the other side of this. So in this particular series, and I'll, I'll reference game two specifically, I really liked the 650 because it allowed me to watch more of the Red Sox by itself before the Celtics came on at 8.15. Like the Red Sox game was already about two thirds over by the time the Celtics even started. And like, obviously I got to divide my attention between the two without that though. I don't know. I'm a night owl. So it's not, I'm never tired at the end of games. So I I can't really, I know most people like the earlier start, but I'm just not there. Like I like to have more time in the afternoon just to like, do whatever like in that at that point i'm making dinner i don't want to make dinner during. i like to make dinner so it's ready for the game not make their dinner during the game but i recognize that most people go to bed earlier than me i do think the earlier start times would be more convenient for most of the viewers i don't think it's more convenient for people going to the park but i think if for like the like, if you want to if you're working a full day like 
Pat, I'm sure you can relate to this. If you work a full day and then you want to like go to the gym or something or go on a run or go grab a drink and the game starts at 650, you have such a, a small window to do it. You know, like it's basically yeah. like work, tiny, tiny break socks. Not that the socks are a job or anything. It's just like I want to be when I when I watch the Red Sox, I want to be locked in focused. I don't want to be like partially watching. So I don't know. I'm just complaining about nothing. I like the 650 start time. I would just like, you know, an explanation, maybe some more notice. I didn't find out until like a day before the first game. Can I make an admission? It would, the weather was so beautiful before the second game that I was I decided I was going to take my dog on a super, super long walk. And Chester was just he was enjoying the hell out of himself. He was going up to all these people saying hi to everyone. He, he loves the attention. And as soon as he gets a little bit, he starts going up to everyone to ask everyone else for attention. So we're running behind and I missed three pitches. Oh. Scumbag. I missed three pitches. Have you thought about getting rid of Chester because of this? I, I thought about punishing him. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No. no, I had to euthanize the dog. Sorry, we missed three pitches, so I I can't can't have that. He loves his new home, uh, heaven in a in a in a farm upstate. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Chester. I love no Chester. Chester's sweet. He's got great ears. He's got floppy ears. He does have floppy ears. Uh, shall we get into these games a little bit? I we'll we'll start with the first one. Just at the start of the game, Taj Bradley comes out there and he's shoving it so far up their ass. Strikes out eight of the first nine guys. And Hauk is just throwing the ball well, but not like it doesn't have a seven scoreless written all over it. What were you what were you thinking in like the third inning after you watch? I want to say the nine hitter was probably Rafaela and he struck out. So when you're watching the Red Sox strike out for the eighth time in nine batters. What are you thinking? Same old, same old as Tampa. I'm thinking. <laughs> gotta start hitting the ball. The way that Taj Bradley was throwing on Monday. The only time I ever remember thinking of that, fi- feeling like that through three innings. Do you guys remember when Shohei pitched at Fenway and struck oh, out like a 15 yeah. strikeout complete game? Yeah, it was, it was like crazy. bad weather, right? Wasn't yep. it like ugly? Yep. ugly. That's oh, wait, exactly. No, I, was, I don't know. Something. Yeah. He was like nine and he struck out 14. Complete game shutout. And I was like, we're going to see this again. This guy's unhittable. I thought there was no shot in hell. They scored two runs. Yeah. Um, you, no, my actual thought was kind of just, it was kind of just like, I can't wait for this game to be over. This is what it's probably going to be like. Like, you, <laughs> what did you say? Eight of the first nine it was? Seven, yeah. eight? Yeah. yeah, he retired That's- nine in a row, and eight of them were via the strikeout. The ninth one was the Devers grounder that went off his foot, and do you they think still that, cut the out. <laughs> do you think that Pete Fatsy in the dugout was like, you guys should start making contact with the ball, and then that's why they started hitting the ball the second time through the order? I think Pete think Fatsy to probably it? told them that if you swing the bat at the ball, you'll hit it hard and score runs, and then they scored five runs off Bradley. So right. in reality, Pete Fatsy should be getting an extension. Crazy. I saw no Pete Fatsy tweets this whole series. Crazy, wow. right? <laughs> no, when they're winning, he doesn't exist. But when they're losing, mm, who do we pull? Uh, Pete Fatsy, you. You're the guy. You're the problem. Not the personnel. Not the guys on the field. You, Pete. So dumb. But I'm glad yeah. they won three games. I'm not here to be a hater. No, no. We're certainly not here to hate. We never hate. But Except you know for, who I, you know who I'm not going to hate on. Really, Johnny I'm DeLuca. not going to hate on. Oh, we Johnny. do hate on Johnny Deluca, who, by the way, in two series, seven games, has done basically nothing against the Sox. It's the biggest, oh. the biggest surprise. It's way more surprising than the sweep. Possum. He's playing possum. What does that mean? I hear that term a lot. I actually don't know what it means. Playing, playing possum? possum. It's like playing yeah. dead. Because like, possum possum's possum's playing dead to uh, elude predators. Yeah, it's their okay. Survival you know what he's doing? Kill. They were actually talking about this. I think Middlebrooks was talking about this on the broadcast with Devers. Uh, it's like when Manny used to take the fastball so that they would give him a breaking ball later in the game or something. And he he's just doing taking pitches down the middle just so he can obliterate them later in the game. That's what Johnny DeLuca is doing. He's, he's, as you say, playing possum now so that 
come August or whenever the hell we play the Rays when it's when they're fighting for that wild card spot, he can come out and whoop some ass for no reason at all. <laughs> He's gonna hit like a little dinky bloop RBI single and be like, I waited months for this. Oh hell yeah. yeah. You will never guess who the last series of the season is for the Boston Red Sox. Oh, they talked about it quite a bit on the broadcast. Surely those games won't matter. And surely Johnny freaking DeLuca is going to still be ice cold at that point. Oh, that, don't I, can even... tell you that. I can tell you that. No, please. When no, does this please. episode air? Let's mark the date down. It's airing on the 23rd. This drops on the 23rd. So when, when that last series of the season comes around and the Red Sox are in the hunt, and it's a three-game series with the Rays and the winner of that series. You just got to win two out of three, and you get into the playoffs. And they split the first two. And then Johnny DeLuca comes to bat, down by one in the ninth inning with men on second and third. We'll bring Who's this pitching? back. Yeah. Zach is pitching. Oh. We got this. Buddy, if you thought the Longoria home run sucked, you just wait till DeLuca wait, wait drops the Johnny DeLuca. in September. The Johnny DeLuca bloop single of death. I'm telling you, like people like think curse like Bucky Dent, curse Aaron Boone or whatever. There's no name that would fit better into a curse than fucking Johnny DeLuca. It's like, oh, don't fucking no, you, say that name. Don't you fucking know who say actually, that name in this town. You know who actually I think like more than 99% of hitters in the world just scares the crap out of me. And he didn't do much this series. But Yandy Diaz, yep. every time That's he comes up, I'm like, this guy's going to hit a double every so single good. time. Yeah, he's a freak. Weird. It, it's so strange because he's so yoked. He looks like he hits 45 home runs a year, but he doesn't. He just hits laser beam doubles all the time. Tonight what he hit a home his, run. But. What was his career? He hit some last year, but before last year, his career high was like, it couldn't have been 20. It yeah. had to be below 20. He won the batting title last year, didn't he? Yeah, he sat out the last game. And then Seager, his average went down by like a point or two, and Yandy won it. Let's see. His home run, his... Highest total was last year, 22. But before that, it was only 14. Yeah, like, what is that? He just swats it. But you know what? We have our own version of that here. That's Jaron Duran. Jaron Duran's yoked out of his mind. He doesn't hit many homers. But Yandy, Yandy's kind of joked, yoked on a... Joke. Like, J- J- Jaron... He's yoked. <laughs> Jaron's got... Like, he's, like, athletic yoked. Yandy's just, like... He's beefy yoked. He looks like Eric Thames. Remember that guy? Yeah, yeah Eric... I don't think he's that big. That guy was like no, a no, not freak that big. of nature. He was definitely, definitely had something in his cereal that made him yeah. strong. How did he never get popped for anything? MLB must have just been like, this guy, I mean, he's not that good. And didn't he looks he go cool. to like, didn't he go to like China or something? I know he yeah. went to Asia, but I'm pretty sure he didn't go to Japan. He went to like one of their secondary leagues. I think he might have gone to Korea. And when he left, he was like a normal looking dude. And when he came back, he was the Hulk. <laughs> he had like a goatee or, or like a, what is this thing called? A, he had like a soul patch soul, or something. Soul patch. Yeah. He had a soul oh. patch when he left. He comes back full beard, like 10 times the size, like <laughs> Eric Dane. And then he, he was good that first year back. And then he was just kind of whatever. So oh, how, about, how about Tanner Houck? It's crazy, man. You know how he says, and like, okay, let me back up. Tanner Houck had an interview. It was like three weeks ago and it was with Jemai and Jemai asked him like, what are you doing differently? And part of the answer was Houck just saying, oh, I'm, I'm treating it like I'm playing catch. And after he said that, I totally see it. Every time I watch Houck pitch, it looks like he's just playing catch with Wong or McGuire, like no pressure at all. He doesn't look like he's stressing even in a tough spot. He's not sweating bullets. Like some of these guys, he's just playing catch. And I know guys have said that in the past, but you can totally see it with Hauk. It's different. Pat, I have a, I'll start with you here on this question. Is Tanner Hauk at this point, we are uh, almost through the month of May. He will have one more start in May before we're two months through this thing. Is Tanner Hauk an ace? I'm putting you on the spot here. I didn't tell I didn't tell these guys this question was coming. For the 2024 season, Tanner Houck is an ace. No, 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 no. Brad Foe would yell at you if you said that in the studio. You got to, is he an ace? That's true. No. Oh, I agree. I agree. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe. Not yet. Uh, yeah. He's not. He's not right now. Talk to me at the All-Star break, but right now, no. Is he a very, and you guys 
all winter long. All I did was bash Tanner Houck and Garrett Whitlock as starters. I have the pies all over my face. I look like an idiot. Tanner Houck is a very, very, very good starting pitcher. He is not an ace yet. Are we... Okay, I know we're probably going to go through game by game. But before we do that, since this this is one... I have two tough questions for you guys tonight. This is one of them. How do you guys, right now, where do you put Brian Bayo in the starting pitcher power rankings for the Red Sox? Gordo is holding up a four. Pat is holding... All right, two fours. Where, I had this me, conversation tonight, actually. Give me I the order. Com- okay, I'll give my order. I'll go Tanner Houck. And by the way, I do think he's an ace. I watch him pitch. It's his stats and Cutter Crawford's stats are similar, but even when they were exactly because like they had like the same amount of innings, same amount of runs, same amount of st- hits or whatever, it was it was all ridiculous until their last starts. Watching Tanner Houck and watching Cutter Crawford, Cutter Crawford is really, really, really good. But I don't, I don't see the same in him as I see in Tanner Hawk when he throws the ball. Tanner Hawk legitimately screams ace to me. When I watch him, it's, it's like I'm body. watching like it's it's but it's also just the it's like the approach he just attacks and cutter attacks too, but it's just strike, 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 slider for a strike. He the command on his slider is ridiculous. But I'll get back to your question here. I'm going Hawk, Cutter, Pavetta, Bayo, Criswell. And there well, is a world where Criswell jumps Bayo. I'm just not there. I think I would the only thing I would switch, I'd probably put Bayo three. I would go Hauk, Crawford, Bayo, Pavetta. Just because Pavetta, his home run rate is like red flag, major red flag. He gives Pat, your eyes, off. your eyes opened. Where what where, where are you at? Yeah, I think I'm with you. You had Hauk, Crawford, Pavetta, Bayo, Criswell, correct? Yes. I okay, so say- Sammy. Sammy was higher on Bayo. I I thought someone was going to jump Criswell. I thought that's where I, Sammy. I thought that's where you were going with it. I thought you were going to put Criswell, but you were. I think what what were yeah. You were just you were you were getting a vibe check on if we have like Cutter and Hauk above Bayo. Yeah, because just just like early in the game, he had that tough second inning, and everyone's down on him. And I get it. It was it was a really ugly inning. And I'm thinking like this is the guy that they extended, and I'm, I did not disagree with the extension. I would have done the same thing. But at the same time, I'm like, he's like the third or fourth most reliable starting pitcher they have right now. And I think that more so speaks to how good the pitching staff has been rather than Bayo not being good enough. But it's just an interesting thing to think about that he's he's the guy. And, and of course, there's other factors like age, contract, but still. Well, Sammy, it's a, it's two questions, too. And and we talked about this on the radio this past weekend. I, I would sign that extension again today. With Bayo, like you, you asked for power rankings. I gave you the power rankings. But if you ask me, my order of operation, like where where do I think these guys are going to be in two or three years? My rankings would be different. I feel really good about where where Bayo is going to be in a few years. Like he doesn't, he's not a finished product right now. I think even though in the final game of the series, he struggled a little bit. He ended up getting the quality start, six innings, three runs. Like super impressive on his part to get through the sixth inning after what those first two, three innings looked like. But yeah, I mean, Bayo, I still, I still have super high expectations for moving forward just because like those guys being in front of him is less about Bayo disappointing, which I don't even think he necessarily has disappointed. He's kind of had like one actually bad start all year, but it's more so about holy shit, how and cutter throw gems every single time. And Pavetta is your horse. That's just where I'm at. It, it's nothing really against Bayo. It's it's more a compliment to the staff. Yeah, I, 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 I vibe with that. Do you guys remember back in probably December or January, I would say, there were rumors floating around that the Sox were trying to extend Tanner Houck, and we were like, what the fuck are they thinking? Why would you ever do that? Yeah, we talked about that. Do you think they that. saw him under Bailey, how he looked in bullpens? knew how that would translate, and that was the reason for that? Or do you think it was just, we want control of pitching, we're not going to spend any anyways? Where How, how strong were those rumors? Because I, I I barely remember. I know I heard he them. Said, I just don't. He said they talked. He said. Yeah, but what, is that, what, is, what does talk mean? Does that mean like, like a brief 
passing conversation or did they like sit down at a table with the agents and the player and the team and the GM? I bet it wasn't blah, blah, blah. that much. No, right. I'll, I, tell, I, I'll I tell you what I think. Like, I bet you it was just like an informal, like, what do you think about are you open to an extension? He says yes. And then maybe a number's thrown. What if it was literally they're walking down the hallway and Breslow just goes, hey, man, extension. And how goes maybe. And that was it. Rumor breaking. They have talked extension. <laughs> Brad no, heard I've... it and was like, Oop. here's what here's my guess. Because they extended Whitlock back in the in 2022 to a an amount where it's like palatable, like you can you can accept the extension if he's a reliever, but if he's a starter, it's a steal, like a super team friendly steal. That's what I bet they were trying to talk with Hauk. And I bet Hauk was thinking to himself, I am a big league starter. So if you're gonna pay me like a big league starter, I'll talk. If you're not, I believe in myself. And props to him for not signing anything, because whatever the hell he would have had to sign to get something done, he can sure as hell beat that now. Yeah, I hope yeah, I hope I'm... they eventually get something done with him. I, I think they got him for a while though. I think I want to say he more? has. I think he's got like three years left. It's it's quite a yeah. bit. I think he sure. is three. Three, yeah, this and three. Yeah, so they're not. They're probably not in a rush to extend him. It's not like, and he's not an older guy, but he's not. He's not Brian Bayowich, Tanner Houck, Quick check. He's. Oh, hey, his birthday's next month. He's gonna hey. turn twenty eight. Happy birthday, Tanner. Yeah, so he's already locked up through what thirty one then. Yeah, yes. I feel like an extension with him would be more about just like locking in a value for those years, and then like getting. I don't know. It, it would be. I feel like the later you get the harder it is to come to an agreement in the type of deal the Sox are going to try to sign because I feel like what they keep signing is just trying to keep those arbitration years down and it's less about getting additional years, if that makes sense. But yep. I'm sure we'll hear about it all offseason again. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for more rumors. Five, six, seven. Yeah, this and three. Yeah, so they're fine. I mean, I mean I'm not saying it's not a priority, but it's probably not atop their list right now. You got Casas, the young, young, young guys. Uh, There's a lot. Any... There's a lot. There's a lot. Like they could. Make, we could talk. Thick Willie could like they it all off season. Cotillo kept preaching like, "Don't sleep on a Thick Willie extension," and now yeah, and he's then, playing out of his mind. Yeah, dude. Wow, he is. He's he got cold for a little bit, heating back. You also got to think of. Uh, Sandy Alcantara, when they trade for him in the offseason, they're probably going to want to extend him too. Yep. This is my new thing, by the way. I'm giving you guys a preview of what I'm going to talk about all winter long. I Healthy, figured. Repaired arm, Sandy. Oh, I'm going to be so annoying. If that yeah. happens, Sammy, I would be so, like, I would be. You'd cry. I'd, I'd cry tears of joy for days. There's your ace. All right, we'll Are talk about thinking? this plenty in the offseason. Yes, plenty. yes, yes. Let's, uh, I guess before we. I know we've we've kind of been jumping around, but it's fine. Uh, but before we get to game two, Devers setting the Red Sox record for most consecutive games with a homer. He in the first game of the series hit his sixth straight day. His six he hit a sixth home run in six days. One a day. This one came off Taj Bradley right after he shoved it up the Sox ass for three innings. Uh What's crazy is you look at the stats and you talk to you hear the Devers interviews and stuff like he doesn't feel like he's locked in. And you look at the numbers, he actually like outside of the homers, he he actually hasn't been locked in, which is crazy. It's just he's he's getting the job done even when he doesn't feel close to his best. It just it makes me excited about later in the summer when the weather warms up and Devers is feeling his best, his timings on I this could be this could end up being one of Devers' best years yet. I think. I agree. It could be, but also this could be this this stretch we're seeing with all the home runs, but not much else. This might be what you get this season with this lineup and the lack of punch around Devers. He's not going to see as many pitches. They're going to pitch around him a lot more than usual. No Casas behind him or in front of him. No really really scary bat like Tyler O'Neill. I like, but I don't think pitchers are flipping out about Tyler O'Neill. I, I just don't like I, I'm bummed out because I think this could be one of those breakout seasons for Rafi. Not that he's not already a great hitter, but like that next step kind of season. But I don't know if the personnel around him is going to afford him enough hittable pitches to 
to take that step. If that does that make any sense? No, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Lineup lineup protection. People, oh, lineup protection is not real, buddy. Every major league hitter will disagree with that. Yeah, like if he's doing this with the pitches he is getting, imagine if he had someone in front of him or behind him where he's getting even more pitches to hit. Like he's or actually bad. maximizing, or, yeah. Or right, both. right. Like imagine imagine friggin', you know, Duran gets on base and then you have like healthy story, like 2021 version of story, and then he hits a a single and that's first and third, and then Devers comes up and the pitcher's like, shit, well, I can't. I have to pitch to him because if I don't pitch to him, then the bases are loaded. And but and it's it's a pretty simple concept. I just don't know if he's going to get enough good pitches, but we'll see. I mean, he's he's certainly hitting the ones he's getting. What's yeah. the OPS right now? Nine twenty five. Nine twenty five. That's a joke. Which, if the season ended right now, that would be his career high, and he's doing that with, as you said, Sammy, little help, line of protection. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's right. it's been crazy what he's doing. I just like I can't stop thinking about the quotes from him saying I'm not even locked in and Cora saying he's not even locked in. It's just like what is it what is that what does that mean? Like what are you like what's he going to look like when he is? Two homers a day for six straight days? Like, is that what we're going to get? Man. Can you imagine though? Like if they god damn it, I keep coming back to this. Like if they invested like again, I like Tyler O'Neill, but imagine they got a real legit middle of the order bat right in front of Devers, who's now batting fourth, or behind Devers. If, if Devers is batting second, you get a real impact bat that would help Devers, so not help Devers, but he would see so many better pitches. Ah, this whole friggin' team is just going to be... Like, when they do well, I'm also frustrated because I'm like, oh, they could have been even better than this if they the, the friggin' if front office invested. invested. But hey, I'm still, I'm still rooting for them. I'm still happy when they win. It's just like back of my mind. It's going to be lingering all season long. Yeah. No, there's no, there's no, like, unless they w literally win the world series, there's always going to be the what if, right? Well, can you Is imagine it, if they miss the playoffs by two, one or two games? Yeah. When, if that happens, then we'll pull out the, oh my God, if they just had Gio or Shella to fill in it, like as short for that period of time before they move sit on there. And uh, yeah, those I discussions mean, will, will be tough if that happens. Even at the end of the year, you just point to the, injuries i mean oh what if we had whitlock what if we had giolito what if we had story what if we have chris murphy like there's gonna be so many what ifs if shit doesn't pan out but for right now it's hard not to be excited they went yeah. to the trap and they swept yeah yeah and i i want to highlight it go to game two here and highlight cooper criswell who had his one not good outing of the season in his last start against these same rays at fenway and it left me thinking, oh, like, what do they know? Like, everyone else has had trouble with Criswell. The Rays, his former team, come in and look great. Now Cooper Criswell goes to the trop. He goes five and a third, six hits, two runs, both were earned, one walk, six strikeouts. He kept them in the game. Those two runs that I just talked, those two runs scored right off the bat in the first inning. Rays jump out two to nothing, and you're thinking to yourself, well, here we go. Like, this is going to be... One of those games, just like the first game with Taj Bradley striking out eight out of nine. You're thinking, well, shit, here we go. But to his credit, Criswell goes four and a third scoreless. Like he pitched into the sixth. I believe it was the first time of the year that he pitched into the sixth. So impressive to keep the Sox in the game. They got that run to make it 2-1 off a really impressive at bat from Grissom where he stayed patient, stayed calm, got his 2-2 count and got a middle-middle pitch to drive up the middle. Criswell kept them in the game at that point. Like he, they, like that hit doesn't mean anything. Duran's game tying homer later doesn't mean anything. If Cooper Criswell doesn't settle in, figure it out. And he sliced and diced the Rays for four and a third innings after that tough first inning. Gordo, totally agree. He adjusted. Perfect way to put it. First inning, kind of getting a lot of the plate, which has been working for him all year long. But I guess the Rays had the scouting report on that and they were hitting him hard. And uh, credit to the Nesson broadcast, uh, Will Middlebrooks and D.O.B., they pointed out right away, getting a ton of the plate, and the Rays were not only hitting the pitches, they were being super aggressive. So, you know, they knew it was coming. Next inning, he totally changed the approach, pitching away from the zone, getting a lot less of it below the zone, uh, east and west, as we like to say about Criswell. So credit to everybody involved. Credit to the Rays for having the scouting report, and then credit to Criswell for adjusting. That's yeah, that first inning. Yeah. That first inning... 
Cooper Criswell saw seven batters before he got out of the inning. In those seven batters, he only threw 15 pitches. That right. There you go. There That's you crazy. go. So they definitely, the Rays, they're smart. They definitely had the book on Criswell, who pitched for them last year. So it's no surprise, but Hey, that that's that's not easy to do. I, I feel like these guys, like we've seen Gordo when we go to uh, Fenway, the pitching meetings, the game plan meetings, they last a long time. So they probably had this game plan talked about and implemented early. And now one inning in, what, what 15 pitches in, you're already changing it. So credit to Criswell, credit to Bailey and his staff. That was, that was impressive. Little things like that. That's something that Bailey talked about too before the season is like, we want the net when guys take a tumble we don't want them to fall down 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 we want to have a safety net underneath so that we can make adjustments not just from start to start but at times from inning to inning and you saw it in this game from cooper criswell they don't win that game without that adjustment i it was impressive man cooper criswell is a big league starter he really is and with the garrett whitlock news that it doesn't i mean obviously we, he's going to see dr dugas uh we don't really know that much outside of the fact that he's got a damaged UCL and it just kind of screams either Tommy John or internal brace procedure where he would miss the rest of the season regardless. You're going to be relying heavily on a guy like Cooper Criswell. And if he weren't pitching so well, it would like you, you just think about how you would feel if Cooper Criswell had instead of uh, what is it like a two? I've got the ERA up here. Two, eight, six ERA. If he had a five eight six ERA, like most Sox fans probably would have predicted going into the season, how would you feel about the Whitlock injury there? It's a good point. Not good. Or even if you didn't have Criswell and you're trying out Chase Anderson every fifth day. Hey, true. Hey, be nice to be nice to Chase. I don't know no. why I like Chase Anderson. Something about him. I'm like, I like this guy. I think it's the fighting. Oh, I, what else would it be? It has to be the yeah. fighting. We've never we've never met Chase Anderson. He's We've very, uh, he's a guy. If he's we ever, also, go ahead. If we ever know that we're meeting Chase Anderson, can we wear fightings? I'm trying to think. I used to have an orange fighting. My high school's colors were orange and black. So I wear, I'd wear an orange fighting when I played. Yeah. That I got a red, thing. white, and black braided fighting. Ooh, Still do. That's the heavy yeah. duty shit. Yeah. Just that's a, the, that's the cleanup hitter shit right there. I just had a plain uh, black one. You, by the way, you guys want to, I know you love old well, Gordo. You like when I uh, explain how my weird brain works. I every do. time, every time Chase Anderson pitches, I can't help but notice. Let's see. Do I have an example? Okay, I can go get an example. Every Red Sox player, the home jersey specifically, the number eight in the font looks like the little tab that you open a beer can or a soda can with, and I can't unsee it. It's the same. Same ratio. What? You know what I Hold see on. every time Chase Anderson pitches? I see Pablo Sandoval. I see. Why do you see that? Why do I see Pablo Sandoval? Because oh. they have the same number and. Yeah, it's, it took me a second. It's and. Like yeah. Sandoval, Anderson. Like, I. it's crazy. Like literally from the jump, the first time I saw it, that's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, dude! If we show, if we meet Chase Anderson wearing fightings, he's gonna be on this shit weekly. Like he's gonna be so thrilled that he successfully brought back the fightings. Sammy, wouldn't this be the case with every eight? Why is it just Chase Anderson's? Well, I, no, 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 because because he's a pitcher and he his back faces towards the camera, so I just see it a lot more. It's the same dimension. This one's kind of messed up at the bottom, but you see so, what I mean? I know. I see. I it's shaped you're totally like, right. It, it has no. Uh, the, the Red Sox font, the eight isn't curvy. If it were curvy, mm-hmm, it would look less like a what do you, what do you call these the tabs, tabs? Beer, beer tabs. can tabs. It would look less like a tab, but it's like it's like like a skinny eight with no curves. So it looks like this, and I can't unsee it. Did you and like yeah, think this when when like Daisuke pitched for this? I'm trying to think of other pitchers with an eight. My entire life, my entire life, I've always thought this. I see an eight. It's only with pitchers because it's right in your face. Only with pitchers like Dice K the Kluber. entire time I was like, who? Kluber? No, no. I didn't think about it with him. I was just like, get me out of here. You were oh. just, he was just thinking about the loss the Sox were about to take. Now, next time Chase Anderson pitches, I want you guys to both hone in on that number eight 
and then look at the beer can you're currently drinking out of and tell me it doesn't look just like this. It's just the Red Sox font. There's other teams, I'm sure, that have the same thing, but I'm just talking about the Red Sox. Boston. Boston, baby. Boston, uh, Red Sox. Curious your guys' thoughts on the Jaron Duran steal of home. I, I that's don't... Not, that's, a, that's a fielder's choice, in my opinion. It's not really... I was going to say, I was going to say, are you... Oh, yeah, there's, there's Dice K with the... Yeah, I mean... It's a beer tab. The eight actually looks different on the current jerseys, I feel like, than it does there. Am I wrong? Doesn't the, the eight look curvier on... Like, I feel like the road blues in, in particular, the eight is a little bit curvier than it is here on Dice Maybe. K. Maybe. I would have to see it. Yeah, see, but it's pretty flat overall. It doesn't There's no indent in the eight. Barely any. Yeah, there's one, there's one little crevice, but nothing crazy. Tiny. Very tiny. Tiny crevice. But... Yeah, the Jaron Duran steal here. I know when you read on like steal of home, it really jumps out because like you think like anytime any Red Sox fan hears steal of home, you immediately think back to the Jacoby Ellsbury one. But like this, this isn't that. No, right? this was a. Few, I think this should be there should be a separate like maybe a defensive indifference you could call this because. It had much less to do with Durant. Well, but they're not indifferent. They are. Yeah. They are trying to get him yeah, out. That's true. Yeah, it can't be a defensive indifference. I don't know, man. But I, I guess no. I like, like that. Fielder's choice. In my eyes, it would be like ground ball the right field, throw goes home, runner gets the second. That's how I like. It's not a straight steal of home. Oh, it's like not. he just advanced. He advanced on yeah. the. But yeah. but also like yeah. Durant had to slide and get under the tag. So like. He does deserve credit for something. Yeah. I don't know. It, it I, I mean, steal. it's just. I guess it's a steal. Yeah, it's a steal. It's just like. Well, hold on. This is why you got to watch the games. Yeah, <laughs> can't just read the box score. Well, think about. Let's think about the play in the third game when Connor Wong hit the two RBI single and Rafaela is booking it to. It was an aggressive send, and he dives perfectly under the tag, and it was an incredible play. He doesn't get anything in the score sheet for that, but it's an incredible it's play. It's a great play by Wong or a great play by Rafaela. Well, he gets, I mean, he gets a, a run scored. Okay. He gets a run scored, but it, it like Duran total base on the steal of home would get a run scored. Yeah. 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 It's, just, it's, it's a good just play. Baseball. It's just the context of the game. I think it's, yeah, it's still an exciting play. Like you, you throw down a second, you see Devers just kind of stop. That was the best part in my opinion was Devers yeah. doing his part perfectly. He ran like, 80% of the way and was like, nope, just kidding. And then you saw whoever gotcha. was playing. Gotcha. Whoever was yeah, playing just... from, uh, for Tampa kind of had a panic moment through home. But that's. You can imagine. Himself. You can imagine Rafi. Just to... gotcha. Woo. I like baseball. <laughs> we had, dude, Rafi. <laughs> Rafi. Oh, man. I, wait. I want him to do more interviews in English. I feel like he could become a legitimate superstar. Like a. Like a two market star because he's already a star in Latin America. If he started doing English interviews, oh my god, this is my PR part of my brain. Like, oh, we can make oh, this great. guy into something big. He's He'll get there eventually. Yeah. Uh, last thing I have on this game, besides uh, Chris Martin going scoreless and now twelve of his last thirteen outings, including eight straight, in which he's only allowed one base runner. But the last thing I've got here is. Reese McGuire. I don't know if you guys saw this. So he hit that home run off Erasmo of Ramirez. Did you guys see that? The Rays DFA to Erasmo today? Wow. Yeah. Reese McGuire ended Erasmo Ramirez's. Not honestly, let's be real here. He, Reese McGuire literally might have just ended his major league career, career. He may not throw another inning. He might have erased Erasmo. <laughs> Erasmo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Uh, okay. I, I hated that one. I okay. hated that one. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if you guys um have you seen if you're watching on Nessen, have you seen the new ad that they have for the upcoming series? And it's like Especially featuring Connor Wong. Have you seen this no, ad? What is it? No. It's like 
Oh, I'll have to. I'll, I'll, I hope they show it. I hope they don't just retire it after the series. I don't think they showed it tonight, but it, it's like Red Sox Brewers. And guess who's doing it all? Connor Wong. It's the Connor Wong show. Like Connor Wong. And at the end, Connor Wong's like, watch it on Nesson 360. That's me. I'm Connor Wong. Oh, Gordo, by the way, I have to mention, did you see uh, they did a similar promo with Tanner Houck? And no, after like we did our, our our social media bit with him where he's like shooting the shit, talking about cartoons and stuff. I was cracking up because on the Nesson thing, he's like, I'm Tanner Houck and you're watching Nesson. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, he that is not that is not what he sounded like when Gordo interviewed him. <laughs> That's like a different person. <laughs> Do you know how you're watching Nesson electric <laughs> it would be if at the end of those commercials, they just made them go, I'm Tanner Houck and you're watching Nesson and they have the fake one and they do the Nesson N instead of the Disney thing. Like Disney. Oh, three, six, five. The thing is, I understand what they're going for, because like if you watch it when they're advertising the Bruins, and they have Marshawn do it. He just goes like like he like really gets into it. he's like watch it on nesson like marsh he loves the shit and like you you have like connor like connor Wong's just not gonna he's not gonna like it's yeah watch it watch it on nesson no that's actually too much watch it on nesson 360 that's about right <laughs> but yeah i saw so, keep your eye out for that i i need to find Ugh, i i don't think they post these ads anywhere i should have i should have videotaped it it's very funny it's just it's like it's weird, A, seeing the ad just be like, Connor Wong, like, yeah, just because it's still weird for me to have to p have Connor Wong in that light of like a really good player. He just like, I just always just assumed he would be like a, a nine hitter who's like a reasonable yeah. defender, but obviously he's become so much more than that, but it's still, it still just hasn't like in my mind clicked to that. Yeah. He's part of the Mookie Betts trade. Of course he's good. Yeah. You get to trade a guy like Mookie Betts, you got to get a player with equal value in return. And that's why Connor Wong is here. Thank you for you tuning know, in, everybody. This was Play Tessie. Yeah. Okay, Sammy, you, just to go back to your point last podcast about Connor Wong making the All-Star team or need, like hoping that Connor Wong makes the All-Star team, Hell yeah. I didn't even put two and two together. If the Red Sox could have received an All-Star in the Mookie Betts trade, if we can just have said that, like just make it one time, just so we can say that, just like to make, our, make ourselves feel a little bit better for the rest of time, because we're going to be sitting on that trade forever. Yeah. Like if Connor Wong makes the all star team, like, hey. Yeah. It helps a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I think I'm pretty good at not harping on stuff that happened in the past when it comes to the Red Sox, but that's the one I, I feel like I will never, ever, ever be able to come to terms with how bad that trade. Like, I, like, even other bad trades, I kind of, I can just shrug it off nowadays and be like, ah, whatever. You gotta, gotta take risks. But that was like, it's the, since Babe Ruth, that's the worst trade ever. Like Wong's great and everything, but like Mookie yeah. Betts, come on, terrible. Anyway, we don't have to talk about the Mookie yeah. trade. Nobody wants. We can to uh, we can get into this third game here. Um, I thought Bay. We we talked a little bit about it already, I guess. But Bayo today didn't look like he had his best stuff. Certainly not early on. The location was not there. I believe he walked four guys in the game today. Uh, even though he ended up completing six innings. But as I said before, just so impressive for him to make it through six with that early, with the early struggles. And I guess let's jump forward to that fifth inning where the offense just exploded. Just to recap it here, Hamilton walked, Grissom hit by the pitch, would have been ball four, so basically drew the walk. Uh, Roth, that this Okay, this was a weird play. When Rafaela hit that fly ball to left center. Hamilton was on second and was trying to steal third. And a Rosa Reina in left went to go back that throw up, which meant that the fly ball that Rafaela hit to left center, that probably would have been a Rosa Reina's ended up falling, which was crazy in its own right. But then you had Grissom tagging on first so hmm. that when that ball landed in the gap, he didn't get to third. He only got to second. So instead of second and third, no outs, and th that would have been the tying run on second, you have first and second, no outs, tying runs on first. But eventually did not matter because Connor Wong ended up, they, what did they, they got the guys over, someone someone walked or something, and then Wong drove him in. Yeah, Duran walked. Two-run single. Duran yeah, walked. I'm I, I bet you Von Grissom is like, giving a big hug to Connor Wong because that would have been a big talking point 
had Wong not kind of bailed the team out there. Because what Grissom was doing, I mean, obviously he he thought there was a chance that whoever was playing center field for Tampa was going to catch the ball. If you watch on TV and you see the replay, it wasn't really close. But, you know, these things happen, especially with a young guy like Grissom. But, man, you got to. It's just tough because he was turned around. Like, he wasn't looking. Right. Like Yeah, you got to be more got to be more aware. Maybe he was trying to pick up his coach. I don't know. You, I, normally, like, when a play like that happens at the major league level, one of those plays where you can't believe how, how brain dead it is, there's normally an explanation. Like, the hitter, or the base runner in this case, was thinking X. So, my first thought is like, all right, he was probably looking for the first base coach or something. But still, I don't want to absolve him of the blame. You got to... you. You can't do that, especially in the trop against the Rays. That is, every run is huge. Glad it didn't matter, but let's not do that again, Vaughn. Yeah, there's three things that I can think of, like reasonable possibilities I've ever seen that happen. The runner is thinking there's like a 100% chance that ball is caught. The runner can't see the coach or the coach is directing somebody else or Carlos Fables is coaching third base. That's the only time I've ever seen that kind of base running. He's called him Fables. Fables. Uh, I liked Fables. <laughs> he did say Fables. Fables. Oh, Carl's Fables. He was bad, man. He was dirty. God, have you seen all the, the time. Sense he's done in Toronto this year. Yeah, I've seen some bad ones. That's oh, like bad. So that, there's bad. a coach. There's a coach that you can criticize because you can yeah. see him instructing stuff and it's wrong. That's oh, not like dude. when I make fun of people for getting on Pete Fatsy because we got no clue what he's instructing because we're not privy to those conversations. Fabless last year and the years prior. Oh my god, <laughs> he would send them into a fire if he could. Yeah, and he goes to the Blue Jays, and now they're uh, twenty-two and twenty-six. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe he's cursed. Maybe yeah, trading Vlad cursed. and Bo Bichette. We'll Vlad see. to the Mariners. I love it. That's a perfect fit. Where he would not hit well there at all, but that's that's who should be trying for Logan Gilbert. No, oh, no, I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. Relax. I'm kidding. <laughs> we were just like, I'm kidding. Kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. oh, god, no. Um, but yeah, after one awesome two RBI single, Sedan aggressive send at third. Uh, but Sedan is such an awesome base runner. That slide into home was perfect, he got right under the tag, clearly safe. Beautiful send. It wouldn't have mattered even if he'd held, but in the moment, like we've been watching the Red Sox hit for about two months now. We all know they don't hit very well with runners in scoring position. You got to take your chances when you have them. He scored. Ref Snyder ends up singling again, four to three. Then Dom Smith with another RBI single, five three, which I found extra interesting just because he wasn't even supposed to be in the lineup today. Ryan Pepio is one of those guys. They were talking about it on the broadcast. Reverse splits. That fastball absolutely kills lefties. So they were actually going to play Garrett Cooper today, but a sore shoulder got Dom Smith in the lineup, drives in that big fifth run to give them a two-run lead. Next inning, Duran RBI double 6-3, and Abreu with a two-run homer, 8-3. to three. Hammered that. Yep. Those two guys right there, Duran and Abreu. It's weird because like we keep talking about, like, well, one of them eventually is going to have to go when like Anthony's up and you've already extended Rafael. But like, do we really have to do that? Nah, just have, have let the Red Sox have an extra guy. Come on, Major League Baseball, be cool. Maybe the rotating DH can actually be a thing. Just like one out of every four days, you DH. Can we'll you imagine just you just it. you just have such a loaded lineup that all the guys you're rotating would be passable DHs, like regular DHs on any other team? Like I don't like when I don't love the rotating when it's a guy who's like this is not a DH, but it's a decent matchup kind of thing. I don't like that all year long. But man, imagine if they could do it with a bunch of friggin' monstrous guys. Oh, it's Heim Bloom's vision coming to life from the afterlife. Thank you, Heim. Kinda. Heim's Cardinals swept the Orioles. Yeah, first time they've been Heim's swept Cardinals. in a hundred and like eight that series. Was the first time Adley Rutschman has ever been swept. That's wow. ridiculous. That's uh, unreal. That is unreal. They had a little meltdown too. Um, all right, wait. But okay. Let's do series MVP. Then I want to ask you guys my my very tough question. All right. Okay, I, I'm excited for this. But yeah, series MVP. Uh, we were we were actually texting about this beforehand because we were going through guys and there was just no clear cut MVP. Like in a sweep where you win three games, it's hard to take a pitcher 
Like if they'd won two out of three, I probably would have been sitting up here. Joe Braverman, producer in the back, he had texted us. He'd said, Hauk should get some consideration. If they'd won two, I think I would have gone with the guy who went seven scoreless, but they won three. So oh, it's I hard. Got breaking news. I got breaking news. Uh-oh. No, it's good. Luis Perales has been promoted to Portland. This is, I think wow. Andrew just broke this news. I don't think anyone else had it. He's Andrew not Hartman. crediting. Yeah. Oh, so, I love that. Sorry to jump right in, but okay. Perales promoted to double A. This is probably, in my opinion, this is the Red Sox best pitching prospect. Whether he's a starter or not remains to be seen, but it's looking like he is. Uh, he's got a 15.7 K through nine over seven starts in Greenville. So yeah, I think the Red Sox think he's going to be a starter. I was a little doubtful on that because of his uh, smaller frame, but I would be happily wrong. And well, dude, he, he struck, he out, struck 12. out 12, 12. Yeah. He had 25 whiffs in that game. He, he, his stuff is obvious. I mean, he's, way above that level his uh, alex spear wrote a great piece in the globe if you want to go read it uh talking about because like if you look at paralysis surface numbers i think his era at least going into that start 3. i believe was four two okay so now it's down but going into that start it was in like the low fours and alex wrote about how all these underlying metrics like his whiff rate is getting better his walk rate is getting better he's allowing less hard hit contact uh the contact he is allowing is it's all on the ground Really good stuff on Luis Perales. Probably the best pitching prospect the Red Sox have, as Sammy yeah. said. Um, I would say he's the he's got the highest ceiling, but I think Fitz, Richard Fitz, is m like the most the biggest lock to pitch in the majors. But Perales yeah. could be like a stuff. I got more breaking news: a huge trade between the Mariners and the Orioles. Oh, I saw this. Sees Passing Mar bomb. Mariners acquiring Mike Bauman for AAA catcher Blake. Hunt in the league will never be the same. Um, anyway, series MVP. MVP. There's like there's no clear cut, whatever. I'm gonna go Jaron Duran. He was the spark plug in the second game. He played okay in the first game. I think he had an RBI and a run score, and then tonight he wasn't great, but he had two two good games. One was great, the middle game. Um, and his defense has consistently been strong. So I'll go Duran, but this whole series was kind of just a mishmash of good performances. I'll go second. So Pat can play tiebreaker here. I'm not going to go Duran. I want to go Duran. He deserves it the most, but I'm going to pick a guy who needs a little pick me up after some of the slander that he's gotten today. So I'm going to pick Jason Tatum for the MVP of this series, just because I've never seen a guy win so much and get criticized for it. So I'm taking Jason Tatum for as a pick, pick me up. Gordo, you're actually going to need to be the tie the tiebreaker. Oh, I just went through the box scores to kind of refresh myself. I'm going with Willie Abreu. Ooh, Willie had four RBI this series, home run. Played some great defense. I'll go Willie. I'm putting the pressure back on you, my friend. So I have to pick a baseball player. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Well. I, I got to go with Duran then. I mean, he hit the game tying home run in game two and he stole home and he had the RBI double today to put it. I don't want to say out of reach. Six to three is not out of reach, but sure. six to three and five, three is, is a big difference. He's obviously played great defense the whole series. I, I just, he's the spark plug for everything they got going, uh, had that walk that put them in a position for Connor Wong to drive in two runs there and get, keep that inning going. I think we got to give it to Jaron Duran. Which is perfect because here comes my tough question. All right, let's hear it. And this is very broad. Straight up. And Joe, I want you to tap in on this as well. How many position players on the Red Sox would you say are better baseball players than Jaron Duran right now? Ooh, mm -hmm. Like at full health or currently on the roster? Let's let's say full health. Um, I put them top five. I think. Who? I need names. I want names. Um, uh, probably Devers, uh, Hauk, 
Oh, I wasn't even um, considering pitchers. Yeah, I, um, those are the first. Those no, are the no, first position, two position right player. Now. Position players only. Okay, position, position players wanna, only. Position yeah. players definitely top five. Then um, I don't no want to convolute it. Yeah, no particular order, at least for me. I would say Devers. Um, I would probably say O'Neill. He might even be top three now that I think. I was I was just about to say I think I would literally only put Devers and Casas ahead of him. I think I'm in the same boat. I think I'd go third. Casas, two. But I mean, if 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 Duran is giving you plus defense in center field and he's stealing twenty bags and he's hitting thirty five forty extra base hits with another like ten home runs and the OPS is in the eight hundreds. He might be your second best player, man. He's the fact like, that it's even a conversation, dude. Do you remember? Do you remember when we first started doing Who Says No with Bradfoe? And all of us were just like, Yeah, trade Duran here, trade Duran there. Duran is a toss in piece. And now it's like, Is he the second best baseball player on the Red Sox? That's crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, I it's would, the defense that's really like put him over the top, in my opinion. Like that guy, we, we always talk like we like the bat, we like the speed. You got to hide him in left field. Now he's a plus defender in center field. Like it's nuts. Plus, plus. I'd be curious yeah, to point, see. Because like, over the winter, I believe we did an episode. It was right when, right before spring training, I think. The Padres were interested in Jaron Duran. Oh, yes. And I forgot we about kind that. of floated stuff as like ideas. I would love to see how stupid we look right now. Well, to be fair, that was for uh, Snelling or Lesko, which also would have been on un- those, those guys. Okay. Are- okay. Nah, I want to say yeah. I want to say that I wouldn't look stupid. I think I was saying don't trade him. I know I said I know I was on the other side of the Lesko one. I don't remember Snelling. So, well, Snelling, we were just we were floating out Padres names. It yeah, was like yeah, Lesko yeah. Snelling and then their uh, who am I forgetting? Oh, Thorpe, the guy they got from the Yankees. That would have been, I mean, he's he's a good prospect, but the ben other two are. For, flipped for Cease. Right. Oh, right, right, right. Forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, so that's, that's. I was thinking about that today. Duran, really, like, it's tough to deny he's becoming a legit stud. And another guy who's Amazing. under contract for a while, for cheap, so. Four plus, four and a half. It's crazy. Would you, would you, what was the uh, the Astros one? Oh, Eric Getty. He's he's good too. So that would have been none oh, of the trade ideas. None of the trade ideas with Duran would have been like, oh my god, what a terrible trade. We we probably just would have been like, man. That's I was I was always team trade Rafaela before trading Duran. But at this point, like obviously they've extended Rafaela, so they've kind of made their bed there. It'll be interesting to see because it's gonna be like we're gonna have the discussions again this offseason because oh, this offseason is gonna be it's gonna be crazy. But for the time being, shall we preview Milwaukee? Let's. All Let's. right. Milwaukee, they're a first place team. They, despite trading Corbin Burns, despite losing Brandon Woodruff, despite losing Devin Williams as a first place team, though they did just drop two out of three to the Miami Marlins and they're coming off a one to nothing shutout. Pitching matchups in this series game one, you got Bryce Wilson versus Cutter Crawford. Bryce Wilson has a 279 ERA. He's coming off a four and two thirds innings, two earned runs, three strikeout outing against Houston. He does have that 279 ERA, but six of his 12 appearances are out of the bullpen. Cutter Crawford, 217 ERA, coming off five and two thirds, one run, five strikeouts against St. Louis. Game two, Colin Ray. I think it's pronounced R E A. Ray. Ray. Colin Ray versus Nick Pavetta. Colin Ray's got a 407 ERA. He's coming off four and a third innings of five run ball. Five strikeouts against Houston. Nick Pavetta coming off his best start of the season. 304 ERA. He went six innings, one run. It was on just one hit, the homer. Eight strikeouts against St. Louis. Game three, uh, not announced for the Brewers, but it looks like it's going to be Robert Gasser, who has made three starts the season. There is only three appearances in his major league career. Uh, He was one of the main pieces they got in return for Josh Hader. So he has a 2.65 ERA and three career regular season starts. He's coming off of six innings, five runs, four of which were earned. Did not strike anyone out in that outing against Miami. He had a 5.25 ERA in the minors and three starts before his promotion this year, but did have a 3.79 last year and a 3.94 the year before. So he's a reasonable pitching prospect. We'll see. Uh, he goes up against Tanner Houck, who has a 1.94 ERA coming off seven shut with five Ks against Tampa Bay. Uh, another note before we get to the hitters here. Uh, 
Milwaukee just promoted Bradley Blaylock, who I did, most people probably don't know that name, but that's the guy that the Red Sox traded for Luis Arias last year, promoted him straight from double A, uh, has had a really good season starting for double A. Don't know what his role in Milwaukee is. I assume he's going to be a reliever, but they haven't gotten good starting pitching this year. So who knows? Maybe, maybe who knows? Maybe start Sunday. I don't know. Probably not, but never know. Uh, hitters to watch William Contreras playing like an MVP this year. They kind of just got him as a side piece of that Matt Olson trade, but he's hitting 333 with a 931 OPS. Christian Yelich got hurt, but in his in 20 in the 23 games that he has played, he has a 945 OPS. He also just stole home. He's been on fire. He's an unreal player. Christian Yelich, ridiculous talent. Uh, Reese Hoskins, a lot of people wanted him in Boston this offseason, myself included. I think you guys both included as well. Yep. Uh, he leads their team with nine home runs. He's got an 814 OPS. And then Joey Ortiz from the Corbin Burns trade. I don't know if people thought he was going to jump on the scene fast or not, but he's got an 886 OPS and 115 at bats. Uh, and then in the last week, he's had an 851 OPS. So he's, he's kind of a dude. He's a good player. Uh, other guys that are hot in the last week, Bryce terang has got a 933 OPS and Jake Bowers, the former Yankee. Also, the former guy that the Cleveland then Indians traded for and they sent Yandy Diaz to the race for him. That was the trade. That was a bad one. Oof. <laughs> that was a bad one. Uh, so yeah, that that's that's the guys to watch. Uh I would normally ask Joe for the score update on the series predictions, but we all predicted bad things and we are all a bunch happened. of losers last week. I mean, what what we is might... the score update? What is it cuz yeah, I know we all stunk. I mean, I predicted the Sox to get swept. Yeah, and we might need slap. to subtract a point on that one. But it's still uh, Sammy in the lead. He's got seven. Pat, even though he didn't make any picks, still sits in second with four. Gordo, you're in third with two. And then it's me with one. Good Lord, man. Uh, let's let's get into this thing, man. Let's predict this series. Uh, I'll go first. You're welcome, Red Sox Nation, for this sweep. They do exactly the opposite of what I predict every time. And I'm going to ride this wave until... I shouldn't ride it anymore. Give me a Brewers sweep. Sammy, you're muted. Um, you thank go. you. I think the that's great, Gordo. I like the uh, I like the strategy. I you're think the welcome. Brewers the Brewers suck. They're the worst first place team you'll ever see. I think the Red Sox sweep them. Uh, Brewers just got beat up by the Miami Marlins, who also suck, and they got beat up by the Astros, who are I, I, I have they're no idea. They're getting better. They're actually yeah. they're actually getting better. They're on the come yeah. up. Well, yeah, I'm just not impressed by the Brewers. I feel like this is the ultimate purgatory baseball team. And I'll tell you why. Because they have been good but not great for years. And it's like they have too much pride to just sell off their pieces and do a rebuild. They're just content being mid. They got like a sniff of being really good in 2018 and then have like been clinging on to that forever. Even when they get rid of Corbin Burns, they're still like, nah, we're going to hang on to Freddie Peralta because I don't know. Willie Adamas. Yeah, Willie Adamas. Let's hang Even on to him. Weirder. Too. Yeah, if you get Reese Hoskins, who they signed to a short term deal, I bet you they don't trade him. I bet you they hang on to him for whatever reason. He's doing really well. You could get a big piece for him. You're not going to win the World Series. Might as well trade him. Brewers won't do it. I hate them for this. Uh, therefore, the Red Sox will sweep them and then make fun of them for being stuck in purgatory forever. Brewers stink. All right. I like it. So we've got a sweep and we've got to sweep the other way. Pat, you've got a chance to take a middle pick here and be on an island. I know and I'm going to because I was really leaning towards sweep, but I don't think the Red Sox can go sweeps back to back. I think they win two out of three. I think they drop that middle game. I think they drop the Pavetta start. I think they win the cutter start, lose the Pavetta start, win the Hauk start. But Sammy, to go off of what you just said, I was thinking about this as I was looking over for the preview. Would you guys agree that the Milwaukee Brewers are just the NL Cleveland Guardians? Yeah. They're somehow they good every year, but they never win shit. The exact same. Yeah, what's the... Yeah, they both have a pitching factory. Do, do, yep. Wait, actually, the Brewers, this is never talked about. We'll give the credit, give the Brewers credit for something. 
they're like a catching factory. Yes. You guys notice that? Every catcher that goes to them, like Contreras, especially, he's the best example. Really, really good. Like uh, Narvaez went there. He was an absolute nothing. And then he leaves and he's like, actually, you know, okay catcher. So they have a catching factory. And then I think of Cleveland, who have been their good catchers over the years. Like Martinez. They got Naylor now. Um, I don't know if you, you can call, call them. Like, um, Roberto Perez. <laughs> Roberto Perez. Roberto Perez. Yeah, Gold Glover. Gold Glove. Yeah. Hey, Victor so Martinez. It's a good... It's a good, uh, it's a good, good. Joe is saying Grandal was Grandal on the no, no, oh, oh, Brewers, Brewers. He was on the Brewers, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying okay. Brewers. okay, um, yeah, so that's <laughs> such a weird that we should do a poll. Are the Brewers just the Guardians? In the I NL? hope they're not. Wait, actually, what did the Sox do in the Guardian series? Did they drop, they dropped two out of three, right? Yep. Oh, did we? They played them both, they pit them twice, yeah, right. Yeah, and Cleveland I know they like, dropped hot. both at Fenway, or they dropped two out of three at Fenway. But yeah, okay. So we, Pat, did you? You said they're going to win two out of three. Two out of three. You're going to win, win. All right. So we got three different picks. This is good. Uh, on that note, though, Pat, what's it time for, buddy? It is time for drum roll, please. Crystal bomb. Bomb it. Bomb it. Joe, do we have a score update? Yes, we do, and it's a big uh, standing shift, I should say, because we have two on the board from last week, or uh, this past series. Willia Abreu got one for Gordo, so he builds on his lead. He's got eight points, but there's a new man in second place, and that would be Sammy, thanks to the bat of Rafael Devers. So Sammy moves into second place with four, just ahead of Pat with three, and I, of course, struck out on Garrett Cooper, who didn't even play. So totally disregard me in the basement. <laughs> Sammy, that Devers pick might have been... You You back-to-back picks of just the most, like, has to hit a home run pick, and they hit the home run. So props simple. to you, man. You got to yeah, You got to keep it simple. You just keep it simple and build. That's how you catch him. But Will your Brayu, man, he's keeping me going, man. But he didn't need to hit that homer late, but he did. So we'll take it. We'll take it. Pat, do you want to make you should make the first pick this week because you gotta you gotta you got some ground making up to do. Yeah. I've uh, I've been bone dry for weeks. I'm stealing the page out of Sammy's playbook. I'm taking the easy choice. I'm going Rafi. I think he stays hot. Yeah, sometimes you got it. You gotta ride you with your reliable it. pick. You like how I'm giving advice now that I've gotten like my first <laughs> your moderate first. hot streak. Wait, let me tell you how to do this. <laughs> let me show you the ropes, kid. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm good at this. Uh, but yeah, Rafi. All right, I like it. Um, I'll go. I'll go now. I'm gonna take Tyler O'Neill. I just think something about being back at Fenway Park, seeing a former division rival. I, I don't know if these guys are pitchers that he's necessarily seen before. Bryce Wilson was a brave. Robert Gasser, he definitely hasn't seen before. Like, I have no idea about Colin Ray. Probably seen him. I don't know, but. Yeah, I'll go Tyler O'Neill. He's gonna put one over the monster. He's uh he had a day off, so he's gonna have a couple days off, clear his head. Get Tyler O'Neill back on the board. I've gotten so many Tyler O'Neill points before. He's gotta he's gotta get me going again. Samuel. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'll go Jaron Duran. I think he sneaks one over the green monster. Good matchups. He's a 162 guy. He's hot. Home run in the Tampa series. By the way, straightaway center field. Just the absolute nuke. I'll go Duran for my third crystal bomb in a row. I like it. Duran has scattered his home runs. We've we've all picked Jaron at least once, and he has scattered his three home runs around yep. our picks. No one has actually crystal bombed with Jaron yet, so I'm excited to see if someone can get it. Sammy, I'm rooting for you. And on that note, Sammy, what's it time for, buddy? Here we go. <laughs> Uh, just like the Red Sox against Tampa Bay this week, there are no losers, just winners. It's time for guys being dudes. Oh, cha. All right. So we got a new contender in the building. We need a player who has played for both the Boston Red Sox and the Milwaukee Brewers slash Braves. What were they? Milwaukee Braves? Milwaukee 
what were they before they were the whatever who gives were they the braves they might have been the braves you might be right who cares honestly all right milwaukee boston i want to go gordo you go first all right i'll go first this is not it's not common that we pick a guy who's currently on either of the teams but i feel like one of the players that's on the red sox is obscure enough to do this chase anderson pitched four years as a solid like legit like go look up this guy's baseball reference page like he was a legitimate like you think of him now as like the i love ed hand's nickname for him the human white flag or what's the other one i like the human white human victory human cigar. victory yeah. cigar actually the victory cigar is the better one he's the human victory cigar or white flag uh but when he was at the brewers for four years he was a solid mid-rotation starter he threw 118 games 112 of those were starts he had a 383 ERA in those four seasons with the Brewers, highlighted by a 274 ERA in 25 starts in 2017. Had a 393 in 30 starts in 2018. If you guys remember, the Brewers were in the NLCS that year playing against the Dodgers. There was a world where Chase Anderson would have been starting World Series games against the Red Sox. That that shit blows my mind to imagine Chase Anderson starting in the World Series against the Sox. It's like it's like a weirder version of when Joe Kelly started the World Series game for the Cardinals against the Red Sox, and then a couple of years later was pitching for the Sox. Except it's Chase Anderson. It's a good one. It's a good one. I was gonna ban that, but he's not like known enough. Like no, it's, Red Sox fans aren't gonna be like, I knew he was on the Brewers. Like, did you? Really? I'm trying to think of who is there like a super, super, super common Sox Brewers one? Travis Shaw. Jackie Yeah, Bobby. that's it. Jackie, yeah. It's a go. Yeah. Renfro. Renfro. Yeah. There's Wade Miley. I you could have gone, you could have gone Wade. Wade, Wade would have been a good one, I feel like for because Wade's like an obscure sock. Like Wade's that's he's true. A, yeah. he's Wade. one year. One year here. Yeah, yeah. that was it. 2012, 14, 15. Um, 15. Yeah, that was the, he's the ace here. Yep. Great times. All right, Pat, who you got? So I'll throw an honorable mentions afterward, but I went, I had a lot of options, but I wanted to go with an obscure one, but someone who really made an impact here. Someone who's a great player in Boston. Um, I'm going with, um, I think he's the Red Sox all time saves leader. Tyler Thorn, Tyler Thornburg. Oh yeah, he is. He leads the. Re- he has a thousand saves. Actually, yeah, one thousand. I, I think that's he not has obscure. One ERA, yeah. First um, guy to one thousand, Tyler Thornburg. How you're gonna pick the damn all-time sock save leader and say that it's obscure? I know Dude, that was but... the most. What a what a stupid trade for everybody. That Just a so dumb stupid. trade. And hey, no, come on. Dumb. Travis Shaw hit like 30 something homers in a year. I think he yeah, did it back true. to back years. That's true. I forgot he was actually good for a little bit. Still stupid well, though. Stupid. I want to call it stupid. They got Mauricio Dubon too, but he didn't even like play for them. Right. Yeah. Like, he got good, but not for them. He was flipped. I don't know oh. who they got from though. He went to the giants. I think from there, he didn't go straight to Houston. Who knows? Who can never know? Mm, it's going to bug me. All right. My turn. I'm bringing him up. Favorite player. One of the favorite players of play, Tessie. Bill, Bill Hall. Hall. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the ones I thought of. I was praying that neither of you took my guy, Bill Hall. This is a Bill Hall show. Bill Hall talk. Always allowed. One of the coolest batting stances. That uh, was the video game with Jose Reyes. I think it was... MLB 2K. 2K 2008 or nine. nine, Bill Hall just Eight. swatted home runs every single time in that game. He was a beast, one of the greatest Red Sox of all time, along with uh, Thorn. What was the name Thornburg? Thornburg, <laughs> yeah, those two. But we actually love Bill Hall, Thornburg. Yeah, I gotta give uh, an honorable mention since we were talking about the Brewers catching factory. Uh, Jonathan Lucroy was one of the best catchers in baseball for years with the Brewers. Oh did he God, did he actually get into a game in 2020 for the Sox? I think he I, I think he did. Yeah, he played. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because he was Ron Renicky's guy. Like that's why he that's why he came. Ron Renicky. He played one one game. He did not have a plate appearance. That's it. Why do I feel like I remember? Maybe I'm thinking spring training. I, don't I know. think that's what you're thinking. It's definitely spring Jonathan training. Luke Roy. So, he was really good for 
years. I can't believe we forgot about him. Two-time All-Star. My, my honorable mention, Mike Cameron. But yep. I looked up who Mauricio Dubon was traded from Milwaukee for to San Francisco. Who was it? Fucking Drew Pomeranz. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's great. World Series champion. That's an all-time Ooh. great. Dwo. He, uh, when when Brad Foe interviewed him, I was shocked because his voice was not at all what I expected. Is a little Dubon or Pomeranz? Pomeranz. Just a little. No. Uh, he was like, it was like a little derpier. <laughs> he lo- he looks a little derpy. Yeah, a little does. derpy. Yeah, but he's like a six foot six professional athlete, all star major league pitcher. I thought he'd be like, <laughs> I'm Drew. <laughs> That was a trade when they traded Anderson Espinoza for him. I was like, "What the fuck are they doing?" And then he just never did. That's anything. a great example of like can't hug prospects, but also not every trade works out. And was both it was an example of both in one. Yeah. Uh, I was at Drew Pomeran. Here's another weird fact: I was at Drew Pomeranz's Red Sox debut. It was against the San Francisco Giants at Fenway, and the Red Sox were wearing their 1975 like t-shirt pullover yes i remember this yes with the v-necks and the giants had these gross ass like orange ones and they just like pretty sure they kicked the shit out of the red Sox that day but drew uh, drew was not great with the red Sox. his curveball was a thing of beauty it was kind of kershaw a little bit it was it, it didn't was have the impact loopy, but, it, but it was like a sharp loopy like it fell off a table it was beautiful Shall we get into some enough said here? We shall. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll I'll kick it off. So earlier this week, I was playing MLB The Show, and I was playing co-op. So it was me and my friend were on one team, and we were playing against two guys. And like it'll it'll like you'll, you'll alternate at bats, and then you'll alternate pitching. So you'll pitch, and when you're not pitching, you're controlling the fielders, and when you're not controlling the fielders, fielders, you're pitching. And we got absolutely demolished by these guys. They just were way, 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 way better than us. And we're pretty good at the game, to be honest with you. Like, we win way more than we lose, but these guys just absolutely whooped our ass. And then I get a Twitter notification, like, right after the final out. It says, at Boss Sports Gordo, stick to reporting on sports because you're trash at MLB The Show. (laughs) That was awesome. (laughs) And I want to say, I don't know who did it. I want to say it might have been Coop from the Playtesty account, and he quote tweets that tweet and says the play Tessie listener of the week. And then from there, it was just an absolute, like a dog fight between the, like the podcast account and like Sam, everyone was getting in on it from there. Like just an all out brawl with this motherfucker. But yeah, not going to shout you out. Cause you're kind of an asshole, but that was funny as hell. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember the, the guy's name. <laughs> I had it, it up funny. in front of me. I'm not shouting him out. No, no, we don't shout out dorks. Um, that was a good. Uh, that was a good one, though. His his initial diss was pretty funny. Oh, it was hilarious. I mean, yeah, I I I thought it was funny. I initially just like responded with the Homer Simpson like backing up into the bushes because I was like, oh, like I'll have fun with it. But actually, no, he was actually just trying to be a dick. All right, am I am I up? I'm I'm looking for. Uh... Oh no 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 no! Get it out of here! Get, no, it, out. Don't, don't, Get it out! Don't 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 put don't. it up. No, no, don't. Seriously, up. take that off the screen. Don't fucking don't give, give credit up. to losers like that. Um, we don't do that. All right. Yeah. Let me I'm, I'm trying to find my enough set. I had it. I had it saved. But now I can't find it. Oh, here we go. Here's here's a fun tweet from Brendan Campbell about the last time the Red Sox swept Tampa Bay in the trop. Good. Follow. Michael. Michael Chavis was making his major league debut. Wow. He was yeah. electric at the start. Damn. Remember when he hit the home run and the, the kid announced it? The kid like oh, announced uh was yes. doing the PA like a guest PA announcer and uh <laughs> Yes, that was amazing. Dude, he's going to have such a great career with the Red Sox. Uh. Oh. Well. Shout out Chief Chavis who should have been uh one of our yes. one of our guys being dudes for the Nationals. I don't think anyone picked him. Wait, who is who's Brendan Campbell? Is this a good is this a guy I should be 
Okay. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's he's good. He uh, I want to say he doesn't post as much as he used to, but he's a good follow. Oh, oh, he changed his picture. I am following this guy. Okay, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Good follow. Shout out. He did. He changed out, his picture. Shout out Brendan Campbell for that nice little uh, tidbit of info. Chavis. Oh, yeah. Pat, you got any enough said? I do. Mine's very off baseball topic, but I'm passionate about this. The NBA has tran- has changed the rules for all defensive for all of their like all defense all NBA team. It's positionless now. Because all defense teams came out yesterday, two days ago, and I saw that both Derek White and Drew Holiday were, all, were second team all defense. It's like, oh, that's sick. I wonder what guards are better than those guys. The answer is none. Wait, none. what? They don't. So, okay, wait, wait, wait. So, so the best guard. Oh my god, basketball is so positionless, stupid. Sammy, the second team is four guards and a small forward. <laughs> the first team is four centers and a guard. Do they so do this for all NBA too, or is it just the defense team? I believe it's both. Tatum got into the got into the first team all NBA. Let me so look. Hopefully. I have it up. One second. So I mean Jokic, but Jokic's MVP, obviously. But okay, so look, center, 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 guard, center. Bullshit. So then. Oh, yeah. Go to the first team, Joe. Wait, that's... Perfect. Okay. All defense. Oh, wait, what? Wait, I was All confused. NBA first team. All NBA first team was guard Luka Doncic, guard, guard SGA, forward Giannis, forward Tatum, center... So maybe yep. they did. Maybe they maybe they only made it, or it could just be a coincidence. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, second team. Yeah, I don't know. But either way, the 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 all defense one pissed me off. Four centers. What are we doing here? Yeah, yeah. like guard, Weird. guard, guard, guard. Small forward. <laughs> Crazy. You guys got anything else before we wrap this baby up? Negative. No, no. Feels good to have a pretty exclusively positive. And while show. we're on Celtics, by the way, Mavericks game one winner in Minnesota. Oh no way! Dude, Wait, I'm, Mavs. We're getting our dream. We're getting our dream. Uh, it's dude, either our dream or our worst nightmare. It, dude, we it's all one or the other. Dream. One or the other. Dream Gordo. Ah, oh, dude. I want oh, Kyrie crying, leaving the garden. People just not even booing him anymore, just cheering. They don't, they don't even care about him anymore. He's nothing. Oh, ha, ha. that's what dreams are made of, boys. It was close, though. 108, 105, final score. God. No one wanted to make an Austin Maddox reference during this podcast. Who? Oh, God. Sad, sad story. He is not a great guy, apparently. Not a not great. If you I don't know way, what we're talking hey, so, about, look it up. I don't know if I don't know if people so he, Austin Maddox, Maddox was, you know, texting a uh, a person he shouldn't have been texting because she was not of age. And it wasn't the cops that got oh, him. Yeah. It was a vigilante group, and they beat the crap out of him and then did gave him to the cops. Did you see the Nuts. dude lined up behind the door like a middle linebacker ready to just yeah. blitz through and he opened it? Yeah. I mean, I feel like the, I feel like, you know, obviously they're doing a good thing, like getting people oh, yeah. like that in trouble. But I feel like those a lot of the time are people with like pent up rage that want to get like a like a legal beat down on somebody. Yeah, they hey, want to miss the living shit out of someone. And yeah. here's an excuse. Yeah, you got to put it on you. Do it. You got to yeah, make a yeah. thing up. You got to like pretend to be like a 14 year old girl and get this guy to out himself. But you know what? At the end of the road, there's a guy out there that you can legally beat the living snot out of there you go and they did and now it's a news story and everyone's like you guys are heroes and they are and yeah, yeah. austin maddox not a red sox legend nope. goodbye loser see ya <laughs> austin maddox but yeah we'll, we'll close with austin maddox talk that's good that's <laughs> yeah a, our our positive positive podcast ends with ending on a high note gross and on a high note pitcher episode 75 we've done 75 of these shows that's crazy. 75 episodes of Play Tessie. 
Before you head out, remember, hit that subscribe button, whether you're on Apple, Spotify, Odyssey app. Hit the subscribe button. Rate us five stars. Helps us out a ton. Go to YouTube. We're on the WEI page, so check out our playlist there. Uh, we post all our episodes there. So hit the thumbs up there on YouTube and check us out there. Remember to follow us on the socials at Play Tessie on both Twitter and Instagram. But till next time, till after this Brewer series, we'll be dropping an episode on Monday. Keep an eye out. Sometimes we drop some short stuff in the middle there, so keep an eye out for those too. But for Sammy, for Pat, for Joe in the back, it's Gordo here for Play Tessie, episode 75, around 75. Thanks for tuning in. Toodaloo.